Hello and welcome to Boxing in Your Face. My name is Joe Cortez, international boxing referee from Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, last week we were talking about ring positioning or referees and different topics about the duties of a referee. This week I want to talk to you about cuts. Sometimes fighters get cut from an accidental headbutt. In most cases, it's from a legal punch. But you have to be able to uh, tell the uh, commission and notify them as soon as possible uh, when you stop the contest to let them know if it was caused by a punch, give the signal to the commission so everybody knows it came from a punch or you can say it came from a headbutt, a cut came from a headbutt. This way, everybody in the arena, the commentators, everybody knows how the cut was produced. Now, one of the things that I tell the referees when I give my seminars is safety first. So of course, when a fighter is cut, if it's a cut on the corner of the eye, it's minor, small, it's nothing for you to freak out about and, and, and call it the doctor right away. You, if you can see it from a distance that it's over here, small little nick in the eye, nothing serious, let the fight continue. However, if it's inside, the, the, over the eyelid, and in here, or if it's a big laceration, you definitely want to call time and let the doctor evaluate the, uh, the seriousness of the cut. Now, if the doctor determines that it's that bad, you have to stop the contest, try not to overrule a doctor when it comes to a decision like that. Because sometimes a cut like that can be uh, very serious and can cause permanent damage to a fighter's um, eye. So, always take good advice from the doctor. The doctor is your best friend in there. He, you want to utilize his services whenever needed, when you're in doubt. However, if a fighter is able to see okay, the, the, the blood is not impairing his vision, you can let the fight continue and let it go on. But when you see that the blood is really impairing his vision, that's when you got to start thinking you know, seriously because now he's at a, uh, at a disadvantage because he's only really seen from one eye. I'll give you a good example. June of 96, when I refereed the first Oscar De La Hoya and Julio Cesar Chavez bout, Chavez was cut pretty seriously from a hard jab that Oscar threw, and that blood was really impairing his vision. I called timeout right away. I let the ringside doctor evaluate the uh, injury to determine if the fighter can continue to see how serious the cut, because it was pretty big, a lot of blood was coming. I'm not a doctor. So like I said before, call in your doctor, he'll evaluate the condition, send the other fighter who scored the, the blow to a neutral corner. Never let the fighter to score the blow back to his corner because if you do, while you're being uh, preoccupied, evaluating the condition of the fighter with the doctor, the corner man may come up on the ring apron and start giving the fighter some water or whatever. You can't, that's not permitted. When you call timeout, always send the fighter who scored the, the, the blow to the neutral corner. Make sure he remains in that corner. And now you're able to evaluate the condition of the fighter who's cut. If the doctor says he's okay to continue, you let it continue. Then in between rounds, during the rest period, you go back into the corner to evaluate the condition. You may want to call the doctor again to see if the cut got any worse during the remaining part of the round. The doctor said, Joe, he's okay. Let the cornerman work on the cut. They put their, their medication and to stop the coagulant, to stop the bleeding. And they, most, most cornermen are very, very good at their, at their practice. So you let them work on the eye. And if they stop the bleeding, great. However, being that there's a cut already, especially if it's a serious cut, it can be re-injured again with another heart blow and it can open up more, you see more blood coming out, you may want to call time out again, like I did with uh, Chavez with De La Hoya, and let the doctor evaluate his condition. Doctor says he's okay again, let it continue. Now you see the fighter is, is trying to get by, but he's getting hit in that eye, and maybe the blood starts coming out again, like Julio says to Chavez, the great champion, but he was at a disadvantage again because the blood was impairing his vision. So now what I did was, I started to, you know, feel kind of like, wow, he's taking some punishment here that he, I'm not accustomed to see him receiving. And it was because uh, he was not able to see those blows coming. 
his vision was being impaired. Call time out again, bring him to the doctor, or the doctor watched him, uh, looked at him in between rounds. Then I think it was the fourth time in the contest that I called time out again because I saw Julio receiving some hard blows to the head, and I don't want to see these fighters take unnecessary punishment. Like I said, these fighters are like my children in the ring, like my sons in the ring. I don't want to see them taking too much. I want to see them come back another day. Took him back to the doctor, and the doctor said, Joe, that's it, stop the contest. Well, and that's what I did. Sometimes there are fighters that refuse to quit. They want to go on, and rightfully so. You know, all fighters have a big heart. They don't, they don't, there's no quitting in most fighters. They want to continue. But you have to do what's right. The cornermen are very, very good trainers who are concerned about their fighters. And I, and I applaud those trainers that would tell the referee, listen, you know what, uh, stop the fight, especially in between rounds. Sometimes they may step up on the ring apron. They know their fighters better than, than we do. And again, uh, when you have a fighter in your hands, uh, as a referee, you have these fighters, you're very concerned about them. But remember, the trainers are more attached to those fighters and they know their fighters better than we do as referees. So I tell them, the, the cornermen in the dressing room, the trainers, listen, you know your fighter better than we do, and if you see something that I don't pick up on, you want to stop the contest, you, you, you're more than welcome to step up on the ring apron, wave the towel, and let the inspector let the notify and we'll stop the contest immediately. So that's how I feel that referees should perform their duties when it comes to a cut, especially if it's a serious cut. However, again, if it's a cut that's produced by a head blow, remember, after four completed rounds, we go to the scorecard. Prior to four completed rounds, it's a no contest here in the state of Nevada and with the unified rules. So you want to be sure that you know your rules. If you travel abroad and you go to different countries, sometimes those unified rules may not apply in certain countries, but they do definitely apply here in the United States. Some countries, uh, when a cut is produced from an accidental headbutt, the uncut fighter, and this is only with the WBC, the uncut fighter gets a one-point deduction. That's because WBC feels that the fighter who's uncut um, has an advantage over the one who does it. So the fighter who's cut is at a disadvantage, so I have a one-point deduction. That's the WBC ruling. Here in the United States, that rule does not apply. So as a referee, remember, do your homework. Study your rules and different sanctioning bodies so you know where you're at because we don't want to see a fighter lose an opportunity of winning a fight because the referee did not apply the rules accordingly. Now, as a referee, you have to remember that in most states, rules across the country here are all unified. There's no standing A count. The three knockdown rule has been waived. It's up to the discretion of the referee. Three knockdowns can occur in the same round. Like the fight that I referee with uh, Manny Pacquiao against Manny Marquez. Marquez went down three times in the first round. I felt that Marquez was in condition to continue. I mean, when they say the three knockdown rule does not apply, that was a precise fight moment of not waving the fight off. Um, maybe another referee who would have not had the experience that I have at the time would have probably stopped the contest three, three times you're down and they wave it off. But remember, the fight had just started. Marcus went down and to my, the way I was looking at it, he looked pretty fresh. There were kind of two flash knockdowns, one was a little bit more, but nothing serious. And I was looking at his eyes and he popped back up after I saw the counter. He jumped right back up, was able to continue. He finished the round strong and ended up, ended up winning the next six, next six, seven, or eight rounds on three judges' scorecard. So I made the right call in that fight. Now, again, when you go to different countries, make sure that, be that they don't use the unified rules in, in some countries, make sure that you understand whether the three knockdown rule is in effect or not and going to the four round, four completed rounds, make sure you sit down at the rules meetings that they have abroad. We don't go to rules meetings here, the commissioners here normally run the, the rules meetings and whatnot. In, in Europe and Asia, what foreign countries we go to, 
we have attend the rules meeting, we talk with the managers and the trainers so they understand uh, what, what rules are applied that night. So always be prepared and go to these uh, fights doing your homework. And also a good thing to do is study the fighters that you're going to be officiating, especially on the championship level. You can go on YouTube and go on BoxRec and read up about these fighters and see some of the videos. You can see them on YouTube, see if they have any habits of maybe uh, going low, intentional headbutt, using elbows, different infractions that some fighters may use, some tactics that are illegal, and you want to make sure you stay on top of that and you address the fighters in the dress room and let them know about these habits that you picked up on. We're going to start with a clean slate tonight. However, these are the rules that would apply, and this is why I expect the view. I don't want any headbutts, I don't want any low blows, rabbit punches, kidney punches, hitting your opponent while he, when he goes down. Those are all flagrant fouls. You know, those are illegal, especially when there's an intentional headbutt. There's no warning for intentional headbutt. Automatic point deduction. You stop him in their tracks. Any type of fighter goes intentionally low, to your discretion, it was intentional. It takes a two-point deduction, and you stop him in their tracks. However, there are some fighters that may be one looking for a way out. They want to be disqualified. They'd rather not get knocked out. They want to be disqualified. Well, if that's the way they want to go, you apply the rules accordingly. But you let them know this is the second point deduction. The next one is automatic disqualification. And it's a black eye for boxing. We have to disqualify a fighter because the fans pay their way to see a good contest, not to see a fight to end up on a disqualification. Okay? So that's very important as, as a referee. I tell the uh, uh, referees out there to also evaluate uh, conditioning of fighters. When they're in that ring, the second round, third round, they're really huffing and puffing. They can't seem to hold their arms up and they can't get away from punches because they're so fatigued. Some fighters don't train hard. They look for the easy way out. They think that their knockout punch is going to get them over. They, you know, they can get over it in one or two rounds. When fatigue starts setting in, it's dangerous for the fighter. The other opponent, his opponent may not be as experienced as fighter uh, B. Fighter A may be in excellent condition, doesn't have the skill that fighter B has, but fighter B is fatigued. It's setting in. He doesn't have the, the, the movement, he can't get away from punches. His arms are dropping. And the other opponent, who's in great shape, not too much experience, stays on top of him, throwing punches, and he just wants to keep on going. So it's important that the referee can evaluate a fighter. So this way, you can start preparing the fighter who start taking some punishment, go into the corner, evaluate his condition. Just, to, just because he may not be hurt seriously, but you want to go there, everything is okay. Okay, so you're setting. The, your platform, if you're going to make a decision in the, in the later rounds that you're going to stop the contest, they cannot say that you never went into the corner to evaluate his condition. You go there, he's taking punishment, like you told him in the dress room, I'm here to protect you, I'm make, making sure the fighters don't take unnecessary punishment. You call in the ringside doctor in the later round because he's taking a little too much, you want to just evaluate him, you're setting up the picture of when you're going to stop this contest. When you stop the contest, nobody can say, well, the referee never went into the corner. Uh, he never uh, warned him about anything. I went to that corner and tell him, if you don't show me something the next round, buddy, I'm going to have to stop this contest. And you see, all of a sudden, these guys, they, they, I don't know where they, they perk up, they got a second win, they come back, great. But if they don't, they keep on taking punishment, then you wait for the precise moment for, for you to stop a contest. You don't want to stop the contest where the guy's throwing punches. You want to wait when he, maybe he's up against the ropes and he's waiting, you're waiting for that one good blow when he hits him solid and his knees will buckle a little bit or he'll go, you know, not down, but you can see he's out of it. That's a good time for, to stop it. Nobody can protest because you already warned him. You were there for the safety of the fighter. And like I said before, safety is first and foremost, and then secondary is enforcing the rules. Well, guys, with that said, for today, I'll say goodbye. I'll catch you next week. Take care.